Hi everyone. Welcome to another lecture from my channel. I am pharmacist Dr. Izudon Wazuzu. Today, I will talk about an important issue that affects many families and relationships, infertility. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, kindly do so now and activate the notification bell, so that you don't miss any future videos from this channel. Thanks for your support as you watch, like and share my videos, and as you subscribe to the channel as well. Now, let's go on with our topic for today. Management of infertility. Infertility is the inability of couples to achieve pregnancy after one year of regular coitus without any contraception. Recent studies show that 25% of pregnancies occur within one month. 60% of pregnancies occur within six months. 75% of pregnancies occur within 9 months, 80% of pregnancies occur within 12 months while 90% of pregnancies occur within 18 months. Factors that affect the prevalence of infertility. Several factors affect infertility and these include 1. Socio-cultural factors, for example taboos, cultural practices, 2. Ethnic and regional variations, 3. Sexually transmitted infections STI, 4. Postpartum and postabortal infections. 5. Age of the partners. 6. Technological advances in reproductive health. 7. Frequency of sexual intercourse. 8. Duration of cohabitation without contraception. 9. Abnormal genital organs. Causes of male infertility. Some causes of male infertility include 1. Abnormal spermatogenesis. 2. Testicular disease. 3. Tumors. 4. Medication. 5. Blocked canals. 6. Pubertal mumps. 7. Filariasis. Causes of female infertility. These include 1. Fallopian tube issues. 2. Ovarian problems. 3. Cervical problems. 4. Uterine abnormalities etc. Prevention of infertility. The following measures may help in the prevention infertility. 1. Up-to-date knowledge of and treatment of all sexually transmitted infections STI and pelvic inflammatory diseases. PID. 2. Proper choice contraceptive method. This influences the risk of PID and infertility. 3. Education on treatment and control of STI especially in young people. 4. Education of the community to ensure that all individuals have access to treatment of STR. 5. Encouragement of abstinence or condom use for sexually active young people. 6. Avoidance of intrauterine devices, IUD, in young people, other infertility prevention measures. These may include 1. Avoidance of multiple sexual partners. 2. Avoidance of premarital sex which may result in unwanted pregnancy and abortion. 3. Adequate treatment of sexually transmitted infections. 4. Avoidance of intrauterine devices in adolescents and youths. 5. Correction of undescended testes, known as cryptorchidism. This is a condition when one or both of the testes have not descended into the scrotum at birth, but stay in the abdomen or only move part way down into the scrotum of male infants. Note that testicles are housed in the scrotum, because sperm production requires a temperature a few degrees lower than the body. An undescended testicle may not be efficient in sperm production. 6. Vaccinate children with mumps, measles and rubella vaccine. These three can affect pregnancy. It is recommended that all women of childbearing age, who do not have immunity to MMR, should receive a vaccine before pregnancy. Mumps may cause sterility in males. 7. Avoidance of unhealthy habits like smoking and illicit drug use. 8. Adequate preparation for pregnancy, by improving pregnancy knowledge, and regular prenatal checks. 9. Avoidance of late marriage since female fertility declines sharply after 35 years of age. Diagnosis of infertility in females. Accurate diagnosis is key to the effective management of infertility. Adequate evaluation of the cause or causes of infertility may need to be done to achieve this. Before any form of treatment. Some common diagnostic techniques used in evaluating females for infertility include. 1. Ovulation testing. This can be done with an at-home, over-the-counter ovulation prediction kit. This kit detects the surge in luteinizing hormone, LH, levels that occur before ovulation. A blood test for progesterone, a hormone produced after ovulation, can also indicate that a woman is ovulating. Other hormone levels, such as prolactin levels, may also be checked. 2. 
Hysterosalpinography. This involves the injection of an X-ray contrast into the uterus. This takes an X-ray of the uterus which can be used to detect abnormalities in the uterine cavity. If abnormalities are found, there will likely be need for further evaluation. 3. Ovarian Reserve Testing This test helps determine the quality and quantity of eggs available for ovulation. Women at risk of a depleted egg supply, including women older than 35, may need to have this series of blood and imaging tests. 4. Other Hormone Testing Other hormone tests can also be done to check the levels of ovulatory hormones, as well as thyroid and pituitary hormones that control reproductive processes. 5. Imaging Tests a pelvic ultrasound which can detect uterine or fallopian tube diseases or abnormalities may also be done to diagnose infertility in females. Diagnosis of infertility in males. Male infertility is responsible for more than one-third of unsuccessful pregnancies. Male infertility is often caused by 1. Low sperm production. 2. Abnormal sperm function. 3. Blockages that prevent the delivery of sperm. 4. Illnesses injuries, and chronic health problems. 5. Lifestyle choices and other factors. Note that pregnancy occurs when a man's sperm fertilizes a woman's egg. This can happen even if sexual intercourse, penetration, has not occurred. A man's semen, the liquid produced when he ejaculates, contains millions of sperms. Therefore diagnosis of infertility in males is often conducted through 1. Sperm analysis to detect low sperm count or poor quality sperm. 2. Examination of sperm flow canals to detect blockages of sperm canals. Drug management of infertility. Treatment of infertility depends on the cause of the infertility, the age of the individual, length of infertility, and personal preferences. Because infertility is a complex disorder, treatment involves significant financial, physical, psychological and time commitments. At the extreme, offering couples the latest in assisted reproduction technology, such as in vitro fertilization, may cost upwards of 50,000 US dollars per live birth. Treatments can either attempt to restore fertility through medication or surgery, or help the woman get pregnant with sophisticated techniques. Medications for ovarian stimulation, ovulation induction, fertility drugs regulate or stimulate ovulation. They are the main treatment for women who are infertile due to ovulation disorders. Fertility drugs generally work like the natural hormones, follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH to trigger ovulation. They are also used in women who ovulate, to stimulate better egg production, or to stimulate an extra egg or extra eggs production. These fertility drugs include 1. Clomiphene citrate. Clomiphene, commonly known as clomid, is administered orally. It stimulates ovulation by causing the pituitary gland to release more follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH which stimulate the growth of an ovarian follicle containing an egg. These two hormones work together to encourage follicle development in the ovaries toward maturation and, eventually, ovulation. 2. Human menopausal gonadotropin, HMG, instead of stimulating the pituitary gland to release more hormones. This injected treatment stimulates the ovary directly to produce multiple eggs. HMG is a fertility medication that contains the two types of gonadotropins produced by the human body. FSH and LH HMG does what FSH and LH do. It regulates ovulation and encourage the growth of multiple eggs in the ovaries in preparation for intrauterine insemination, IUI, also known as artificial insemination. 3. Human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG. HCG is similar to LH in function. It triggers ovulation, in assisted reproduction technologies like IUI, and in vitro fertilization, IVF. HCG is a one-time injection. Taken at a specific time HCG injection is usually timed carefully by the physician, so that the eggs are released from the ovary. Ovulation. When they are at just the right maturity, it is extremely important that the woman follows the physician's instruction as to when she should do the HCG injection. HCG is taken as an intramuscular injection. 4. Metformin. Metformin is used when insulin resistance is a known or suspected cause of infertility. Metformin helps improve insulin resistance, which can improve the likelihood of ovulation. Young women with polycystic ovary syndrome, 
PCOS often have elevated insulin levels and are more likely to develop diabetes. Metformin is a medication often prescribed for women with PCOS to help prevent or treat diabetes. Polycystic ovary syndrome. PCOS is a condition that affects a woman's hormone levels. Women with PCOS produce higher than normal amounts of male hormones. This hormone imbalance causes them to skip menstrual periods and makes it harder for them to get pregnant. 5. Bromocriptine. Bromocriptine, a dopamine agonist, may be used when ovulation problems are caused by excess production of prolactin, hyperprolactinemia, by the pituitary gland. Because dopamine is the chemical that normally inhibits prolactin secretion, doctors may treat prolactinemia with the dopamine agonist, bromocriptine. This drug shrinks the tumor and returns prolactin levels to normal in approximately 80% of patients. Dangers of fertility drugs. Using fertility drugs carries some risks, such as 1. Pregnancy with multiples babies. Oral medications carry a fairly low risk of multiple babies, less than 10%, and mostly a risk of twins. The chance increases up to 30% with injectable medications. Injectable fertility medications also carry the major risk of triplets or more. Higher order multiple pregnancies. Generally, the more fetuses you're carrying, the greater the risk of premature labor, low birth weight and later child developmental problems. Sometimes adjusting the medications can lower the risk of multiples, if two many follicles develop. 2. Ovarian Hyperstimulation Syndrome OHSS. Injecting fertility drugs to induce ovulation can cause OHSS, which causes swollen and painful ovaries. Signs and symptoms usually go away without treatment, and may include mild abdominal pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. 3. Long-term risks of ovarian tumors. Most studies on women using fertility drugs suggest that there are few, if any long-term risks. However, a few studies suggest that women taking fertility drugs for 12 or more months, without successful pregnancies, may be at increased risk of borderline ovarian tumors later in life. Surgical infertility treatment methods. Fertility restoration surgeries. Several surgical procedures can correct fertility problems or otherwise improve female fertility. However, surgical treatments for fertility are rare these days due to the success of other treatments. They include 1. Laparoscopic or hysteroscopic surgery. These surgeries can remove or correct abnormalities and help improve the chances of women getting pregnant. Surgery might involve correcting an abnormal uterine shape, removing pelvic or uterine adhesions, removing endometrial polyps, and some types of fibroids that misshape the uterine cavity. 2. Tubal surgeries. If the fallopian tubes are blocked or filled with fluid, known as hydrosyl pinks, the doctor may recommend laparoscopic surgery to remove adhesions, dilate a tube or create a new tubal opening. This surgery is rare though. Thank you once again for listening, and God bless you. The script of this lecture is also available in the description of this video below. Feel free to check it out. We hope you learned something from this lecture. If you did, kindly like and share this video. Also support this channel, by clicking on the subscribe button, as well as the bell button beside it, and select all from the options. That way, you will be notified of any other video we publish on this channel. Be informed that this is a computer-generated audio for this video, and not Dr. Zudo's voice. It was made to ensure that our audience in different parts of the world, can hear and understand the lectures. Kindly let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Till I come to you again, with another interesting video, I wish you the best in your endeavors. Bye for now, and see you in the next video.